you're playing meaningful football. Yeah. People's livelihoods, families, yeah. put in points, points <laughs> that mean something. Like when you're in the academy, you're playing, you're, you're not, you're playing for points, but there's nothing at the end of the season. Obviously, you, 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 win, you win your trophies and that. But when you're playing men's football, people' livelihoods are aligned, and you can get promoted, you can get relegated, and that means something to people. When you get relegated, you see grown men, women, they're all, all crying. So it's yeah. it's 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 a real it's a real tough, 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 tough football's tough in general. Yeah. Hello and welcome to a very special episode of the Game Football Podcast from the Times. I'm Tom Clark, and I'm joined by Sunday Times football correspondent Jonathan Northcroft and former footballer turned journalist Gregor Robertson. But today is not about any of us because we're also joined by a very special guest. He's played in the National League, League Two, League One, the Championship, and now the Premier League. And he's done it all with the same club, Luton Town. Incredible achievement, especially when you consider that he's the first player ever to do so. Pelly, Ruddock and Panzu, welcome to the Game Podcast. Hello, thank you. Thank you for having me and uh, glad to be here. Yeah, I mean, can I just say, I'm going to let Johnny and Gregor kind of lead the questioning and we're going to talk through your remarkable career already, I've got to say. But just to start, a thank you from me, because at the start of every podcast, I have to do a little intro where I explain who the guys are. And I'm challenged each week to try and come up with a different fact from Gregor's career. Mm -hmm. And I can safely say that that fact about you will trump any that I can possibly find about him. We can try, we can try, we can try. Just a bit. So, I mean, I mean, you've absolutely seen him off. They've for been the rest. really niche now. They've been getting yeah. really niche for my career now. Yeah. Well, we had one the other week about how many bookings he'd had. I'm really stretching it out. So that fact about you trumps absolutely everything. So thank you for that. We've no, finished we'll... him off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Perry, th thanks very much for, for coming in to see us. I'm really looking forward to this. And as Tom said, you've you've just had a, a journey that, that no one else has had in football. Um I've interviewed a lot of players, but I don't think I've ever interviewed someone who's had a single written in his honour, has had a type of honey named after him, yeah. and a mural um, painted in a pub in, in Luton. Yeah. So, I don't know, do you, do you ever just look at this, this sort of place you're at now and think of, the, think of the journey and think, God, it's just been a bit mad? Not yet, no. Obviously, you're still trying to get games under now, we're in the Premier League, 10 games in, trying to get as much points as we can to stay in the league, but... I think once the season's done, I'll look over and be like, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that's been done for me and uh, enjoy it. But right now, we're in the midst of a, a tough <laughs> Premier League season. So right now, you can't really think about it. But hopefully, towards the end, there should be a, if, well, hopefully when we stay up, it should be a, a good reminder of what I've done. Yeah. I mean, the, stu the stuff that's been done in your honour and you, you look at Luton fans on social media and, and they still, you know, they celebrate you all the time. Mm -hmm. That's testament to, the, to the, the sort of recognition that they have for you um, but before Luton which came about 10 years ago I just wanted to find out how that sort of all started and, and you, you began at Boreham Wood in their, their youth system so how did that come about? Um, I was playing Sunday League with Belmont a team in, in Edgware and then I went to have a trial at Boreham Wood and then I got into the Youth Alliance system Played there uh, when I was under 16s, then under 17s went to reserves, and then played uh, a couple of first team games. And then there was a a coach called uh, McMahon, Darren McMahon, mm. who was a uh, had links with West Ham. And then um, from from Boreham had a trial at West Ham, and then uh, signed my professional first first professional contract with them. Unfortunately, didn't play a first league game. Did play a cup game. Mm. against Burnley I think I might have won that game yeah you did yeah um, and then from then on tried to get a couple of games couldn't went on loan to Luton in the December and then signed in January and uh, as I said the rest is history but you're a, you're a talent Pelly so wh wh why why was it Boreham Wood why was there not a, any of the bigger clubs after you at that point or, did, or were, the, were you close to signing for one of the bigger London clubs uh, there was a couple but I think West Ham fit right for me yeah. and he wasn't too far you can go to another club in north in the north or the or down south but i think west ham was a, was a good club and they're known to develop great young players and i thought that would be my good opportunity to get my foot in the game and hopefully make yeah. some first team appearances you from hendon yeah from hendon yeah a lot of football played there what was what was the upbringing like uh it was more just local mates from school and i said i was at belmont from around the age of nine ten my first tournament until 16 mm -hmm. so just played locally had a travel Watford 
<laughs> that's a bit mad, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I tried for Watford, didn't get in, but sometimes you gotta bide your time, and yeah. and, and Bournemouth came along. Bournemouth are, are a, a good academy, though, aren't they? I mean, a lot of people, you know, think that's a pretty small club, and mm. they're a small club, but they've got they've they've built quite a, quite a big academy, and they've had a few few players sold on actually. Nah, it's very good. Yeah, we had they had um, Ilman and Dai, who was at yeah. Sheffield. He could just gone to Marseille. We had a couple of players, but yeah, Bournemouth was, was a great local team. They've They've partnered with Arsenal and they've got a great pitch. The pitch is great and uh, the training ground's right next to it. So I, I enjoy that club thoroughly. Are you from a football family? I was trying to work out with the name. Is it is Pele got anything to do with Pele? Or? Um, you have to ask my dad and my mum about <laughs> that. But no, nah, my dad just didn't play football. My mum was worked, so there was no footballing from there. But I think my dad enjoyed football and said, yeah, I'm going to name Pele. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. It's good. Um, West Ham, you, you, you mentioned you did actually play in a EFL Cup game, mm-hmm. and I think you were quite modest there because it was against Burnley. You were marking Ings and Vokes yeah. playing at the back in the back five. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was looking at the West Ham team; it was quite decent. There was um, both Coles playing, Joe and Joe. Carlton. Carlton. Yeah, you had uh, Kev Nolan coming off the bench. Mm-hmm. So, and you were what nineteen at the time? Yeah. I mean, that must have felt like this was sort of big football at that point that was great to be involved in any first team at, at a young age is, is fantastic and to take my opportunity and win the game was was great I played with Dan Potts who's also with me at Luton yeah, and, uh, yeah for me, me to have a great game and we, we talk about it sometimes Dan say Dan remember we played Burnley he's like yeah it's good so to <laughs> reminisce and talk about it was, was a great feeling and to play in any, any first team game is, is, is a great experience and I think we wish every, any young player to to try and achieve that. What was Big Sam like? Big Sam was Big Sam. You know how <laughs> he is. He shouts, but he's he was a he was a caring was a caring yeah. manager. He, he really was a good man to my manager, and um, I I did enjoy my time all the little time that I had with him, and he showed me a few things here and there, and uh, I can't say any a bad word about him. I mean, having had that um, successful debut, and Sam actually talked about you. I did look look, look up the post match interviews, and yeah. he mentioned you picked you picked your performance out at that point were you thinking right I'm going to have a West Ham career uh, it's tough to say obviously it was a cup game did play well but anything can happen a, t- a player can get injured and you, you shoot in or you might have to bide your time play back in the reserves which we had a great reserve team mm. so at that stage I was just trying to train as well as I can get as much game time as I can and if it didn't work out then hopefully a team picked me up but I tried my best and yeah. Unfortunately, it didn't work out, but Lewin came <laughs> came saving me in the end. I think. <laughs> well, well the, yeah, I mean, like nearly ten years ago, December mm-hmm. twenty thirteen, and Luton came in, um, and you initially went on loan. What, mm-hmm. what were your thoughts at that point? Was it let's do well on loan, come back to West Ham, and see where we go from there? It was it was tough because I was coming. Well, my contract was expiring in the summer, so I wasn't sure if they're going to sign me or not. But the main aim was to go to Luton, even though I can't lie to you, I, I didn't want to. Yeah. It was when you're in academy football, it's a bit of a bubble, as, as yeah. everyone says. You think that you're gonna make it, and when a team in non-league doesn't what comes for you, and you're like, oh, I'm dropping so many, so many leagues down, and is the pitch gonna be great, or <laughs> the facilities here, or we're gonna train in where dogs walk, well, dogs walk <laughs> yeah. where you train, and that. So that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's tough, but sometimes you gotta take the risk. <laughs> of dropping down and I'd say to anyone just play some professional football get some game time wherever it is and eventually your talent will come through and I've done that in the December went back to went back to West Ham in January and then I signed towards the end of January for, for, for Luton Was it a bit of a shock? I mean obviously you'd had some experience with Boreham Wood but Yeah it, it was a little bit of a shock because I think Boreham Wood was in a better place than Luton even though Luton would just drop down but where they were training you had people walking everywhere and they had portal cabins and it's it's, it's not league football in it but you got you got to adjust your surroundings and I think I because I had the experience of Bowman before is a I think it's a lot easier for me to adjust and yeah we I done well in my in my initial one month loan and as I as I said coming to my expiring contract in the summer I had to go to Luton and express my worth and yeah we managed to get promoted that same that same season was it a local park then you were training on no nah, the they had their own training ground but there was access for the public okay. so you had 
kids could go then. They was cordoned off so that a little bit of roping. So <laughs> around the roping was just our, our pitches and then if you wanted to walk your dog or play a little bit of cricket or yeah. whatever you wanted to do, <laughs> there, was, there was room available. But it was at least it was all in one position. Yeah. Like the, the training ground was here, the gym was here and the canteen was here. Sometimes in, in non-league teams, you're training at a school and then you're going back to the stadium. And so in that sense, everything was, was there at Luton. Yeah, and you had John Still, mm -hmm. who is a bit of a lower league legend, yeah. and he's brought through so many players from a sort of non-league level, actually, all, all the way at the top almost. Yeah. So even if even if the club wasn't kind of set up at that point with high facilities, did you find high standards in him? Yeah, he, everyone knows, he knows the league like the back of his hand, so for him to come into the club and set his standard and his, his methods... Because I think it made it easier for us to get promoted. We just played a standard four four two, and mm. we ran over a lot of teams. And we 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 were fantastic that season. Scored hundred goals, had a hundred points. So for us to do that, even though I was in the second part of the season, it was good momentum for us, and we we managed to achieve what we wanted to do, and that was to get promoted. He was famous for his fitness of his teams as well. Was he quite a hard? Yeah, <laughs> I had some hard times in Portugal where we used to just do yeah. six laps of just running until you until you drop you drop. But I think that that bode well for me and all the team because we we were fitter than a lot of most teams and we were scoring five sixes nearly every game. So I think that helped for us to to have a base fitness and keep our our standards high and throughout the whole season. Tell us about your debut. So it's Alfreton Town um, away. Um, Impact Stadium? No. No? Debbie was Stains in the Cup. Debbie was Stains in the Cup. Okay. <laughs> so there we go. Tell, tell us about Stains in the Cup. <sighs> well, I'm not a centre back, okay. but they played me. <laughs> <laughs> so that clearly it's that I'm not a centre back, but obviously, <laughs> yeah. people got injured at West Ham, so I, I started to play centre back. Right. And then obviously, when I came to Luton, my first game was at centre back. Stains, I think we, um, we might have drew the game 0 0 or 1 1. And uh, yeah, I played with my centre back. Joe Davies, he was at Leicester, mm -hmm. and a couple of other boys, Matthew Robinson, Zane Banton, uh, I think Mark Cullen, and a couple of U team boys. It was a, it wasn't a bad game, and uh, went to the replay, won the game, back in midfield, back in, <laughs> back in midfield. I'll say uh, the replay at Kenilworth Road, and uh, yeah, that was that was a debut for Luton. Did you get um, tested out? Because I mean, you're you're a teenager, non league, and they're gonna see if you see what you're made of, aren't they? Because uh, I'm a bit of a big boy, I don't think they would. So they would. So I think I had a. It wasn't a bad game, but I think I managed to get through it. Obviously, it was a debut, so sometimes you're a bit nervous being at such a young age. But yeah. I think I got through it, and uh, yeah, it was a, it was a yeah. big experience. Okay, so Alfreton was the league debut then. Yeah. Yeah, away big from slope, from big slope on that pitch. I know slope. it well. Is it? <laughs> yeah, it is a slope. <laughs> it's a slope, but nah, it's, it's good to get one four five five nil. So yeah, it's good to get a win on my my debut in the league. So it was a good experience that as well, and uh, good to integrate with the boys and be a part of a, a winning team. You also a bit, you know, Luton had been in in the national league for a long time, oh, conference oh, wow. as it was then. Mm -hmm. So and I know you you came into the team and were really successful, but mm. how hard a league is that to actually get out of? Do you know, cause it's only two. Now they've changed a bit because it's like Extended six player. played five and then four plays. But back then it was just first gets promoted, second plays fourth. No, second plays second to fifth, fifth playoffs, and then yeah. third plays fourth, and then yeah. yeah, it's tough. But yeah, it's. It's a lot of muddy pitches, a lot of away, away travelling, and you got to be mentally right. And we were able to to achieve that. And as I said, the team was was in fine form before I came in, and we just carried on since I came in. And um, for us to score so many goals and produce the performances that we did, it, it, if you haven't played in the league, <laughs> I, I won't say I wouldn't advise it, but it's a, it's a tough league, and it, it can make you it can make you a, a strong. Well, for me, it made me strong mentally because there's a lot of times when you don't want to play and you're playing at 7.45 and it's raining. Even though it's, it's everywhere in football that happens, but some of the pitches aren't great and you just got to grind it out. And yeah, it is a tough league, but it's one where I wouldn't say I wouldn't say go back to no. It was a good experience for me. Toughest away ground in that one? I've got one, but go on. I'll see if it's the same. <laughs> <laughs> Toughest away ground. 
because there are some tough ones. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. Mine was Dover. We didn't have Dover. Did you not have Dover that time? Yeah, okay. Dover. We I had... thought it was tough as well. Eastleigh, oh, places like that. It's like, you're right, it's like a completely different sport when you play away it's, to it's when you're totally, playing at home at Kenilworth Road. <laughs> it's totally. Um, you know, it was a good win, but I would say my favourite one was. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. I'll have to get back to you on that. No, one. Worries, that no. One what, were the, what were the what were the like journeys like? What, what was your mode of transport? Was it? No, nah, we had a coach. You had a coach. We yeah. had a coach. Yeah. yeah, everything was was really set up properly. Yeah, yeah. And if you had to travel on the day or travel away the day before it was it was all well yeah. done Luton Town really looked after us yeah. in that sort of sense what did you I mean what did you learn about football playing in, in that environment that was different to let's say the under 21 stuff you played at West Ham you're playing meaningful football yeah people's livelihoods families yeah. and points points <laughs> that mean something like when you're in the academy you're playing you're, you're not you're playing for points, but there's nothing at the end of the season. Obviously, you, you, you win, win your trophies and that. But when you're playing men's football, people' livelihoods are aligned, and then you can get promoted, you can get relegated, and that means something to people. When you get relegated, you see grown men, women, they're all, all crying. So it's yeah. it's 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 a real it's a real tough, 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 tough football's tough in general. Yeah. So playing the, well, for Luton in non-league is. It was a experience and experience that I said we'll go through again, and it's it's it can shape you, yeah. and it can I said it molded <clears> me to be mentally strong when things aren't going your way, even though a lot of things do go <laughs> away for you, and it makes you a, it makes you a tougher person. Was it, I mean, was it enjoying the taste of that that made you actually sign permanently? Because as you said, you 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 went on loan, you went back to West Ham mm. briefly because had an injury crisis, mm. and then you chose to go and sign the permanent deal. Was it? Once you'd had a taste of that meaningful football, you thought, I, I don't want to go back to just youth stuff. Yeah, I would say get games. Yeah. It's all about getting games, getting games, and then you may think they drop it down leagues, but if you're getting games, then another team may come for you yeah, in the higher leagues, League One, League Two, whatever happened, even if we didn't get promoted, other teams may come for you, even though you're having games. And uh, I think winning as well. If I went there and we weren't <laughs> winning, it would have been tough. Like, oh, I've gone here, we've been beaten four or five games in a row but a winning mentality did help and Luton had that before I came and that continued when I joined I mean it was the first of several promotions but did it mean <laughs> as much as going up the football league did that mean as much as any of them yeah, yeah. as of me my first promotion it, it meant a lot Yeah, getting promoted with a team that had done so well and had so much camaraderie and good team spirit and great, a great manager and a great staff was 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 a fantastic achievement, just not for the club, for myself. And as it being the first, it's the one where you live long in my memory. I mean, you mentioned the the, the kind of camaraderie. I was looking at the team. You've got Andre Gray in there. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Alfie Mawson, obviously Joe Davis. You've mentioned also a couple of sort of proper lower league kind of legends. I think um, Paul Benson and stuff yeah. like that. What was was it just a sort of special thing that John still had built was it a, 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 a kind of atmosphere that as much as your quality your spirit was was what the club, club was thriving on at that time I think you just got the right mix of people you had the young and the old you had me as a young as you had Matthew Robinson we had Jake Howes who's who's most of my age we had Andre Gray and then we had Paul Benson Steve Monno at the back mm -hmm. uh, Tiles at the back not the back Tiles in goal yeah. sorry and um, yeah the mix was great Ronnie Henry was a one of my favourite captains. He was he was a he was a comedian. Tough one. Oh, comedian. Oh, a comedian. Loved loved to play football, and he was a real leader on the pitch. Him and him and Steve at the back were were instrumental to us being so successful. Yeah. So you you, you up in League One, League Two rather, um, and I think <clears throat> the club was sort of had quite a decent first season mm -hmm. back in the football league. Finished eighth, just outside um, the playoff places. Not so good second season. Yeah, I think it's twelfth, maybe. Mid table, yeah, yeah, kind of. And but looking at you, I think you had a run of injuries at that point. Yeah. And you had something I mean, according to Wikipedia, calcification of the hamstring. What what is that? 
Um, you know, I don't know the ins and out of it, but just Hamid mean, just kept not tearing, but kept straining and then just continuing, continuing. And then I think it was just about building my body back up again. Um, yeah. I hadn't played a lot of lead games like that. Obviously, I was playing the youth team, but yeah, at West Ham. But I think just continuing to my body growing and adjusting to playing league week in, week out, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesdays was a bit tough on my body. And I just needed to have a season where I could slowly get back into it. And mm. once Nathan Jones and Jared came in when they went after Nathan, after John still left, I think they got my body right and I played played more games after that. So it was just about maintaining my body and keeping it strong. Tell us about Nathan Jones because I mean he, he he seems like now he seems yeah. a bit of a whirlwind. Yeah. But he was younger then. He must mm-hmm. have had even more kind of energy and intensity and stuff. Nah, he hasn't changed. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's, 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 he's exactly the same. Um, right. When he came in, he. He he spoke a real good game and he tactically yeah. was he was real real good and his records at Luton I would say speaks for itself he he just got us playing a diamond formation which not a lot of teams played mm. at the time and we just got moving the ball and we done so well and yeah he was probably one of my favorite managers because he had me playing week in week out at a, at a great level and the staff that he brought in. At the time, obviously Jared, I said the sports scientist that helped me develop my body and keep on playing games was was a testament to to what he can do. And the club just kept getting better and better and better. And he was an extreme part of that. Yeah, I, I interviewed um, Kieran Dewsbury Hall a couple yeah. of years ago, yeah. who you'll know well. And he said to me, he had when he was looking to go on loan from Leicester, he had quite a lot of options. But Nathan Jones met him in a service station, sat him down, got a laptop out. And said, right, these are all the games you've played in the last two years, and that included like under twenty three games. Mm-hmm. And he's he's like, that's what you did well, that's what you didn't do well, that's what I'm going to work on with you. Mm. And he was blown away. He was just like, wow, I, I don't get this level of detail yeah. anywhere. Yeah, is that what he was like with you in terms of improving? Your yeah, game? tactically and where he wanted you specifically to play and how you wanted to play. He's probably one of the best managers mm. that 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 I had at Luton. Um, from and his detail was real good mm. he had exact positions where you need to play how you wanted to play and tactically he got a lot of things right at Luton and it's a reason why he went on to become a Premier League manager and obviously sometimes stuff doesn't work out for you mm. unfortunately at West Ham and the West Ham at Southampton yeah. it was tough if he kept them up it would have been a miracle and obviously I hope that he if he went down had the chance to bring them back up but such as football is a business and it didn't work mm. out but for for me and for Luton, he done some incredible stuff, and he made or oh, improved a lot of players at the club at the time that he was here. A promotion to League One. I mean, I, he had a couple of near misses. Mm. The, the Blackpool oh, playoff. Tough. Is that as bad as it? Is that in terms of ones that were hard to stomach? Was that? Was yeah, that? the game was like six five, and it was like three two over there, and it was three three at home or stuff like that. And being so close and. When they come into the changing room, the changing room is so close, and you hear them cheering, it, yeah. it burns, and there's a picture of everyone on the floor, and you <laughs> yourself, ah. and you never want that feeling. Yeah. The feeling is it, it hurts a lot, and we managed to to get out the league. I think that's the following season. Next season. So yeah. I think behind Accrington Stanley. Yes, that's right. Second yeah. place, twenty seventeen eighteen. Yeah. So yeah, to go back and get promoted the following season was was a great achievement, and it was one where we followed and enjoyed. Because I, I think the story of Luton is a club with incredible mentality, mm-hmm. ability to bounce back. Yeah. So the bouncing back from, from that point, and I think Blackpool actually scored a last-minute goal, didn't yeah. they, to edge at 6-5. That own goal, I remember it clearly. Own goal? Yeah, that is from a corner, it's headed down, and Jordan Cook's on the line, and he's kicked off the keeper, and the keeper's dived, and he's going in the net, and oh, it's, it, it, <laughs> them... They stay in your memory, they itch a lot, but for us to come back the next season and get promoted, it kind of soothes the pain, but at the time, did I want to cry? Yeah, but <laughs> it's, it's, it's a tough one to take, but we uh, managed to get over the line the next season. Yeah, I think Gregor knows one of your coaches quite well as well at the time. Paul Hart, yeah. Yeah. He's kind of, he was like Nathan Jones' mentor, wasn't he? Yeah, he my, was, yeah. my youth team coach in Nottingham Forest, and he's he was a tough taskmaster, but... Even when you mentioned that the diamond formation, mm-hmm. we played that in the academy. I think that was really yeah. something he believed was a really good system, difficult for teams to play against, and quite 
you know, obviously the midfield is very important in that too. So how how important was was Paul Hart? I think in that, that now, journey, Paul Hart was great. He took a he took a, sometimes a lot of the sessions and made sure that we got our rotation right. We used our fullbacks a lot. We had James Justin and who's at Leicester now, just scored mm-hmm. the other day, and uh, Jack Stacey, who just moved from Bournemouth to Norwich. So, yeah, they were instrumental to bombing down wings and putting balls in for James Collins and uh, Daniel Hitton at the time. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it was all about rotation and keeping the ball well, and I think we, we did that a lot of the time, and it was it was, it was, a, it was a successful formation that, that we had in them in League 2 and League 1 and suddenly having worked so hard to get into League 1 it looks a bit of a breeze wasn't it you know you sort of <laughs> I see League 1 League 1 we just we are, went on like a 29 game on beaten run yeah. That ended at Charlton, unfortunately. I think Lyle Taylor scored two goals. Okay. So them, them games, they stay <laughs> save because it, it hurts. Well. Yeah, man. So, yeah, League One, we... Damn information, no one could handle it. As I said, we had JJ and Jack Stacey just down the wings and we had Hilson Collo up front along with Isaac Vassell just putting so many so many goals and, and assists for each other. So, League One did seem like it was, it was, it was real easy. But, yeah. yeah, I think we just had a lot of momentum and team just couldn't handle us. And, yeah, we ended up... And getting uh, and getting first place in League One. But what I think was amazing about that season was that Nathan Jones goes in the middle of it. Yeah, doesn't he? He goes well. He goes to Stoke. Did Stoke, Stoke? Yeah, he went to Stoke. Stoke. Yeah, and uh, Mick Hoff. He went to Stoke in January yeah, yeah, yeah. after a FA Cup game against Sheffield Wednesday. Yeah. Okay. Still Remember a lot to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, Mick Hofford came in and he just steadied the ship. Obviously, we had a we had a formation that worked for us. He didn't have to do a lot. Yeah. He knew what we were doing. We knew our positions. So for him to the state of the ship, well, obviously he did put his little tactics and his little inputs in. But in general case, we knew what we were doing and we just he just made it easy for us. He said, listen, I'm going to just manage here, but you control the tempo, control the training because you know how you do it. I'm just going to come oversee everything and I believe that you can get promoted. And we did that. I mean, Mix is Mr. Luton, isn't he? He's, he is an absolute legend. Well, and... I'm, I'm, I'm close, but yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> he was, he was Mr. Luton, wasn't he? <laughs> no, he's, he's still, he's still <laughs> Mr. Luton, but yeah, listen, no, he's, yeah. Mike Mikhoff is a Luton legend. He's, he's, he's still around the training ground, still doing this guy and work. So, you yeah. know, anything that you need, he's all always around the training ground. If you speak to him, he's one with two ears to listen and he can give you any advice that you need. It's yeah. funny with Mick as well, because he's, I played for Mick actually, but and he's, you know, he's got this reputation mm-hmm. as being, you know, a hard a man, hard man and yeah. from his career and stuff. But when it comes to when you, when you see him, when you work for him, when mm-hmm. you train, he's he's kind of very mild mannered yeah. and measured, composed, mm-hmm. and he was a good, really good coach as well. Yeah, really good coach for us. And he let us play what when he needed to tell someone off or do this, change a little bit of this. He was he's ready to do that. But in general, he 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 managed us very well. And as I said, any time you need to speak to him, he was there. I think he's calmed down from his playing days. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah he's, he's he's a great man. He's a great man for Luton as well. Would it would it be fair to say, Pelly, that the the first season up in the Championship was the toughest you've you've had? Yeah. Like the whole club have had, not just you, but I mean, just it it, it, it was a it was a long slog, wasn't it? Started with Graham Jones, mm-hmm. he got dismissed. Mm-hmm. You were, I think, twenty third, and then the pandemic struck, yeah. and you had to sit there in lockdown, sitting Wait. at twenty third, mm-hmm. staff furloughed. Um, and I mean that must have been a t- time of real uncertainty for everyone And yeah it was a tough season for all of football all of the world basically but obviously Luton is a small club we do not have the biggest budget uh, in the not in the world but in in, in the league that we had the league where he's in the championship so for us to just wait around and see who's going to manage us and surprisingly <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised to me anyway Nathan Jones came back and was able to to save us. We didn't play diamond actually. We played four three three, and we were just solid. Sat back, wait for teams to come to us, and hit them on a the counter attack. And um, yeah, in the end, it was a great season for us. But to wait around and survive on the last day of the season, it was um, it was a relief because yeah. that was a it was a real long season and probably one of the toughest seasons that Luton have had since I've been here because yeah. there was a lot of uncertainty and uh, we weren't playing our best football in the championship as you know it's a tough it's a tough league and yeah. anybody can win anybody can get relegated and that's how we felt during the season it's, it was tough but we maintained our spirit and in the end we was able to, yeah. to survive that season so, someone like you that cares as much as you do about the club the community the fans mm-hmm. during 
lockdown and, and, and the pandemic, did you really feel that acutely? You know, you wanted to help people and they were missing football, they were missing their football club. Um, I mean, what what did you guys do in the community? And um, It was tough. So you couldn't, wasn't really allowed out. Yeah. So whatever we can do, we was doing online Zoom sessions or we could send over, I don't know, any signed shirts or yeah. we can do to anything that anyone could help. We tried to do that. Obviously, we were limited to what we could do. So we, we tried to do our best. And well, if the, the fans were happy, I hope they were happy with, with what we've done when it was dress, yeah, all the fans and Luton love love Luton Town and it's a it's a fan base run club so we've always got to give back to the supporters and the supporters have helped stabilise the club and made the club a Premier League yeah. team right now and with people being furloughed you, I mean you, I take it you know every member of staff by first name almost yeah I've been there long enough so yeah. you'd, you'd have known these people and mm -hmm. how tough it would have been for them yeah it's, no one wants to the wages or anything to be cut and we're living in the pandemic it's, it's tough to, to live day by day not knowing how much you're going to get and it's it's tough on everyone but we all contributed players, staff as a, yeah. as a collective and to help stabilise and run the club as much as we could and I think we did that and the, the end result was we stayed in the league and everyone was back in back on their normal normal stuff mm. normal life and it was it was it was a tough time for everyone but mm. I think we all banded together as a yeah as a club as a form, as a formidable formidable force and uh, I think we, we've done that because coming out of the pandemic the club seemed to and maybe it was the return of Nathan but <laughs> it got your strength back yeah. the identity was back with mm -hmm. Luton and didn't go back up straight away but no. first season with him stabilised in the in the championship and then started challenging again yeah I think we finished 12th that season it was a a season where we we didn't think we were going to challenge, but it was another one where you do want to remain because mm. obviously we finished 21st or 22nd, wherever we finished. But for us to challenge would have been a tough task. Just, I think Nathan Jones stabilised the club again, make sure that we played good football and we challenged, but I don't think we was the squad wasn't strong enough to do that. This is only our second season in the Championship, so we've got to make sure that we're not going crazy gung-ho and trying to win every single game and mm. make sure that we have a steady base and uh, finish 12th that season and then he went off again and <laughs> 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 he does like leaving us but uh, nah <laughs> we always have to wish him, the, wish him the best and yeah we did finish uh, in the playoffs to the next season and more heartbreak but um, yeah, yeah it, as he said we had bounce back ability lost to Huddersfield in the playoffs and um, was able to bounce back again and get promoted the next season What yeah. was it about Nathan Jones and Luton that worked sometimes it's a match made in heaven and I think that was <laughs> that was Nathan Jones and, and Luton Town he I think he was at the club for so long that he knows he knows the club and knows how to get the best out of players and I think he did that with me and did that with a lot of players so for him to to come back and stabilise and have us challenging it was a great it was a great feeling great experience and when you're familiar with your surroundings I think it's a lot easier when you go to a new club Sometimes you don't know. Not, you know you're gonna bring something, bring your own staff, but you don't know the kit man, you don't know the head scout, you don't know the head chief, and sometimes them things can not hinder you, but not make it difficult. But you're just not familiar with settings. So having Luton there, familiar, well, I think it made it a lot easier for him. Yeah. So I mean, amid all of that, you kept signing new contracts, didn't you? Kept, yeah. Kept, kept staying. So I mean, why? Uh, the grass ain't always green on the other side and I think Luton have been always been good to me and I think every season apart from one season in League 2 where we didn't finish higher than the season before clubs just kept, kept progressing um, Leeds was there a couple of teams like Blackburn were there uh, Middlesbrough were there the main one but Nathan Jones actually, actually <laughs> told me to stay no, don't go to Middlesbrough and um, yeah, you convinced me to to stay, and we'll do something special when you're here. And we we did, and I've got to owe Luton everything because they believed in me, believed in my talent, believed in what I could do for them. And hopefully, it's it's been proven where we are in Premier League. We st we still got a full season to go ahead to, and hopefully, we can uh, be a Premier League team at the end of the season. Is that you also got a bit of a different mindset though, Pelic? Is like it sounds like 
you're taking on board what Luton have given to you and and that's a reason to stay rather than um, I might get a better contract somewhere else or I might you know might have a go somewhere else and maybe move quicker up the leagues uh, that can always be the case um, people can move for money which is sometimes the main thing for people people move because they don't like where they're playing they don't like the weather sometimes the weather <laughs> can <get apart. laughs> and I'll be, I'll be honest yeah. um, if Spain came in and you want to play in Mallorca or something then all those moves were north for you the north is it, uh, the weather's not that nice up there but um, oh. yeah listen uh, sorry sorry, sorry. <laughs> I, just to get, I just wanted to get you to Aberdeen but it's not going to happen is it I hate that Aberdeen is far I'm sorry <laughs> but, um, <laughs> it's what my missus <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's a lot of things coming to coming to play some people got family that don't want to move from their family but like I say I always say Sometimes you gotta take a risk, a risk, the risk and reward. Um, and in my case, I didn't actually move, but well, from West Ham it was a risk to go to yeah. Luton at the start of my career. But yeah, for me to stay at Luton, get, well, whatever Luton's given me, I've taken it all on board and I've given back as much as I can. But now it's a, it's a case where I need to focus on on mm. what we can do this season and to achieve or to stay in the league would be a great great and massive achievement for the yeah. for the whole town for the whole club and especially for me came, coming from non-league going up for <coughs> one club and staying in the Premier League would be would be a fantastic fantastic feat and hopefully we can achieve that I, mean, I, I mentioned the the song the the, the single that, that I think it's a Luton singer songwriter mm-hmm. wrote called Pelly and he's named his album Pelly and me and Gregor were looking at the, um, the, the, the the song before we came on and I think the lyrics are it's a love song, I think, and it's mm. all about loyalty. It's mm-hmm. about, and you're the person that embodies yeah. loyalty to him. Are you a loyal person? Do you think that's part of your makeup for staying? Yeah, to the club. Loyalty is a is can mean one thing to someone else and another thing to to someone else as also. But um, yeah, for me to be loyal to Luton and, and because they've given me such a great opportunity, my first real taste, apart from Bournemouth, of real taste of men's football and a promotion, which which which. It's been great, four of them, of course, and uh, <laughs> yeah, it's it's been a it's been a great ride, and for me to give back for them being loyal to me, also giving me a contracts of the contracts, which is what everyone wants, and safety for family and your your playing career has been it's been great for me. I mean, there, there's always a debate, and Gregor's probably on the other side of the fence as someone that moved club a few. A few times in your career, didn't have a choice sometimes. <laughs> sometimes you don't. You don't want to go. Anyway, this is a bit pale. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. But I, I, when I speak to players, it's like there's guys who stay, and I've, you know, a few have stayed as long as you. But there's guys who stay in a place. And I remember Steve and Gerard always had this argument um, that you get more out of staying. Sometimes they said it about Harry Kane. You know, you you, you get more out of staying. Uh, than shifting clubs because you might not you might miss out on bigger contracts elsewhere but what you get to do is to become a legend somewhere and you get to be have that deeper relationship with the mm-hmm. club is that something that, that your career has given you? It has Luton's been a home for me and uh, mm-hmm. for me to be continue to play as much as I can week in week out for the club that given me a, a good start to my career it's, it's, it's great and Sometimes when you leave the club, you miss it, and um, uh, I thought if I stay, I could do something special. Especially with all the managers that have said, "Listen, we're creating something special here," so, uh, along with the, the the chief scout and the the board members that have believed in what I can do, and I've spoken to them like, "Listen, we want to be doing this. We want to be getting a new training mm-hmm. ground. We want to do get a new stadium." So. To be, or we'll try to be a part of that. I'm not sure when the stadium's going to be built, so <laughs> <laughs> hopefully I'm still there. Maybe a statue would be, would be great. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> believe it, yeah, you never know. Um, and um, for me to try to be a part of that, it's it's great for not just my, myself, my legacy, and hopefully people remember me for being a great player and a great servant to the club and push the club to the maximum they can they can achieve. Was was the Premier League with Luton always part of your dream, or were, were the times that, that would have just been ridiculous to think that? If I'm being honest, for Luton to jump all the way to the Premier League, I'm not sure who would have believed it mm. that much. Obviously, everyone can dream there. Luton in the Premier League would be crazy, but for us to for us to actually achieve it, it's 
it's a fairy tale once in a lifetime uh, achievement that we've done, especially me coming from from one club all the way there and whoever's I've played with that's contributed to that. And um, now we're not quite living the dream. I think <laughs> the dream would be to stay in the Premier yeah. League and we're trying to fight <clears throat> towards that. But right now we're trying to enjoy it. Obviously you enjoy winning more, but <laughs> yeah, for us to, to do that, we've got to win games, be strong as we can and hopefully get results and we'll see what happens there. but at the end of the season we'll know that we've put all the hard work in and if we don't make it we don't but if we do we know that we've put mm. as much as we can towards the season and hopefully we get our credit deserves well, give, what, what is the difference or give us a few differences between Luton 2013 and Luton 2023 just the, just the place you know New training ground. Yeah. Different cars in the car park? A lot of different cars. <laughs> there's no... <laughs> some, I mean, some people still have some Vauxhall courses and yeah. some Beatles there. And um, <laughs> I think Luke Berry got a... I can't remember what he got. He, Luke Berry, used to have a Polo. Okay. So people still have cars the way they drove, were driven for a while and they're, they're, they're easy with the car. So it's, it's, it's no... It's no bad thing to have a, a car that you've, you've loved and hasn't let you down. So, like a Reliant Robin. Yeah. Nah, I'm not saying <laughs> that like Robin yeah. there, but yeah, you know what I mean? But yeah, obviously there's different cars. Um, uh, there's a new gym. New gym, yeah. New gym. That's great for, for us to do our activations and people with injury and all of that. Um, we have new catering stuff I was going to ask so about the food the, yeah the food has got a lot better yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not taking it away in cuddle boxes and cold <laughs> and that but all of that is, is great and yeah this, this, this stadium is obviously we've got a new stand so yeah. we're trying to build that trying to build a new stadium hopefully that gets gets sorted out real soon and yeah just a general vibe and it's just everything's just got better from, from basically 10 years ago so but we are still trying to build up better players, of course, trying to compete in the highest, well, probably one of the best leagues that, that's in the world right now. What about the number of staff and, and then like the preparation that goes into games and the analysis and stuff? That must be a little bit different. Maybe. Yeah, we've got more analysis staff, more more gym staff, more staff for masseuses. So we've got staff coming in and helping out as much as they can. So everything has gotten gotten bigger youth team staff's got better so the change room obviously has got better so everything's <coughs> developing well for Luton Town and long may it continue wherever they have planned I don't know yet but uh, <laughs> hopefully um, it can be bigger and better even when I'm when I'm not there anymore what about what about on the pitch I mean like it sounds obvious that the team in the National League compared to the team you're playing in now is, mm -hmm. is completely different but how have you found moving up those levels? What do you think the difference is between, say, a National League slash League Two player and a player at the top end of the Championship or in the Premier League as you are now? I think the speed of the game. Everything is done quick moments and you can't have a day off in the Premier League. You, you get found out real quick and chances that you concede in National League, somebody like the grass may get stuck, may get long <laughs> <laughs> and it goes wide. It was a bubble on the pitch. Obviously, you know Premier League... Premier League uh, grounds and grass is it's, it's, it's immaculate. So every pass, every precision, every cross is met with with good quality. And as you can see in the Premier League, once people get chances, they they take their chances. So in the National League, you might get two or three where they miss, but in the Premier League, you get one, two, which every everyone's a goal. And you gotta make sure you're tactically aware and make sure you go with your runners. And as I said, you gotta make sure you are on the job every single game because. The game can go past you in a flash and before you know it, you're two, three, nil down and come back in the Premier League because it's a real tough league to do that. Does it feel different though? I mean, like, does it feel different, the actual, you you being in, in the centre <laughs> centre of the pitch playing in a game in the Premier League? Because you block out all the stuff around you, don't you, mm -hmm. when you're in a game? Does it feel different being a Premier League player to when you, we were playing in the lower leagues? Like, the actual game? You do, because when you're playing National League and you're looking at match the day or you can on Sky, you're seeing... <laughs> De Bruyne back then it was Rooney but now you're playing against these players you're like whoa it's not starstruck but you think okay I'm <laughs> playing against good quality people and you got to make sure that one you got to track your runners and two try to do your best because you know they're 
world class players playing for world class teams and international teams. Obviously, there's still internationals at, at national league, but playing against the England people, people from Belgium and Brazil's and Italy. So you gotta make sure that you're that you're on job and make sure you get a, make a good account for yourselves. I just wanted to jump in at this point because the guys are talking about things that have changed. And I'm wondering about the fans, because that's one thing that maybe doesn't change in this mm-hmm. journey of yours. Because I, I'm, I support Lincoln City, so a kind of team that have been at Luton's level before, lower yeah. down, and the kind of club that could only dream of making the Premier League, mm-hmm. having the same journey. And I was interested hearing you talking before about the National League promotion, because when we got promoted from the National League, and we got promoted from League Two as well, but that one was the one that meant the most. Mm-hmm. And you've been on this journey with the fans. So do you have? Do you feel you have that connection with them because of that journey? You know, do you, are you spotting people in the crowd that you've seen for ten years, the same kind of people? Because as much as Johnny's saying, you know, the training facilities change, and Greg is saying, yeah. you're stood on the pitch, and the players, the opposition's changing. Those guys aren't changing. They're mm. with you the whole way. Yeah, I do recognise some fans. Oh yeah, I, look, I, met, I took a picture of you ten years ago. Look, look, look. <laughs> and it's and it's fun. To, it's fun to see that. Obviously, you know that they they'll come in their thousands every single week. So to have them, even some of the stewards, some even some of the the bull boys that have grown up that are still there, it's it's, it's crazy to see. And um, yeah, the fans always come in their thousands. We even in the away fans are fantastic. I think had personally for me had one of the best away fans that I've had since since I've joined and uh, they come in the files and they support us and they've been f- with us the, the whole way through so in that sense now the fans have, have remained real strong with us they try to sell out as much home games try to sell out as much away games that they can and I think they've been a big big part of of how Luton is run and how Luton has survived and how Luton is thriving right now That's You mentioned seeing ball boys grow up yeah. So like you've seen them go from little kids. Yeah, man, like little kids, and then I've seen them now. They, I take a picture of them ten years ago, and now they're they're, they're still in the youth team, and then it's 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 funny, and uh, it's it's great that they they've still been in the academy and doing well. I I mentioned at the start the I think it was a Luton Mad beekeeper made uh, brand of honey mm-hmm. that he's called Pelly Honey. Yeah, have you tried it? Yeah, I tried it. It was nice. It's all right. Yeah, it was nice. Yeah, <laughs> I had it with, with with some tea. I put my tea in there, so yeah. <laughs> I still have the jar actually, okay. and uh, I think I might have to get some more because I just need to run out. <laughs> but nah, it was, it was actually good. It was good honey. Look, you, you'd be very modest, but I think one thing we haven't sort of asked you really is why you? Why have you been able to do something that nobody else has been able to do? Because you know, as clubs move up, they often, well, they always discard players, and it's one of the sad things. You, you see a team work its backside off to get promotion, and then half the guys get chopped and then they go again and but there must be something in you that every time they've gone up the level you've been able to live with it you've been able to improve your game and and managers more at the point of thought we need this guy what what do you think it is i think, I think i'm a good player actually yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i joke, i'm joking but um, of course yeah, so. and i think that i've just improved every single season yeah. that i've uh, that i've been promoted and and played so for me to have the consistency in trying to play, trying to look after your body, trying to play as much games as you can. And when you play well, you get rewarded with contracts. And I think I've done that. And obviously you have to have managers that believe in you. Sometimes haven't been playing, but at, when it comes to the end of the season, I've got back into the team and then done well for all the managers I've played with. So the, the club, the manager, all got to have faith in you. And sometimes it is a bit, a bit, bit of luck. Somebody gets injured or this happens and you get you get thrown back in and you've done well and you keep your position. Ultimately, it's down to you and mm-hmm. how you are. And I think I'm a big character in the, in Luton. Uh, and I think that has helped me stay. And they say I'm, I'm Mr. Luton <laughs> after McCarthy. Yeah, but um, yeah. yes, for me to, to have stayed for Luton, it's, it's a fantastic, fantastic achievement. And hopefully... Um, I can continue being doing well for Lou, and then you never know what the future holds. But um, yeah, for 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 me to be still here, it's, it's, a, it's a great feeling for me anyway. Because we should mention that it's not like you've just played five games a season. You've no. played nearly four hundred games for mm-hmm. this club. That's nearly forty games a season yeah. over ten years. So you've been you've been on the pitch. Mm-hmm. What what is different about your game, or what's the same as when you were playing in that game against Staines then? Well, firstly, position. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. But um, yeah. yeah, trying to drive the team forward and if I need to win my tackles, just trying to be an all-round midfield yeah. player. When you're, obviously, formation does dictate where you play. When I was playing a diamond, I was playing sitting, so I had to sweep up, get the ball rolling. Um, 
as I've moved throughout the leagues, they played me in number 10 position yeah. or one of the two eights. So now my position is now go and get in the box, attack, but also make your, your way back and defend. So the position is it's been different, but try to be an all-round midfielder. And in that in that sense, it's been different, but you got to be you got to have some adaptability in your game. Mm. And I think I've, I've I've had that and I've got that and it's helped me stay at Luton for, for a while. I mean, again, we should mention you're a guy that's played centre half, but you've also scored from thirty yards. And yeah. so there's not not a lot of guys have got that amount of adaptability. No, nah, Nathan Jones said, "Don't you know blazing scored?" So that was <laughs> if the ball goes over the bar, then you're blazing it. So <laughs> that, that lived with me. So didn't do that. Yeah, one. try to limit that. Yeah, but yeah, try to score some bangers yeah. along the way, and I've won a couple awards for that. But um, yeah, contribute as much as I can. If it's a clean sheet, if it's a goal, you got to do everything you can for the team. Yeah. Look, before we wrap up, I, I'm conscious that we we kind of raced ahead a little bit and didn't actually ask you about the moment of going up, and in fact, even about Rob Edwards arriving and putting mm-hmm. that run together. So you can just tell us a little bit about last season's journey. Yeah. We'll see. Nothing left <laughs> again. But um, yeah. Rob came in from Watford, which was I'm not sure how the fans would have taken it, but um, nah, Watford was they always chop and change their manager, so he didn't really get to implement his ideas. He was there for around 12 games, so for him to come and show Watford what he, what he could do and what he achieved was was wonderful. He set us up to play in a way where we was we were direct. A lot of teams couldn't handle us. We had Eli and Carlton up front. And um, yeah, they bullied a lot, a lot of teams, and we we were very territorial, and it helped us to gain territory and play our play our way from there. And um, yeah, for us to finish third behind the top two, we went up with Sheffield and and Ben Burnley it was a great achievement for us, finishing again better than we did last season, mm-hmm. season before in sixth. So for us to finish third was. Was 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 for us a, a great achievement? We didn't think we would finish so so high, considering we was a couple of points behind Middlesbrough at the time, and we overtook them. And yeah, and then got to the semi final against Sunderland, which we did take the lead with Villa scoring. But you have Mami, we had Diallo scored a <laughs> oh, fantastic free kick, and that's the quality that you get from a Man United player. Um, and then they had come up who scored a second goal for them but we knew that two goals from them wouldn't be enough and then come back to go back to the Kenny and we we just said yeah listen they've got missing a couple of centre backs we might as well just go direct and see what they can handle us and couldn't handle us won the game 2-0 and, and then Wembley came I don't really get nervous yeah I'm really getting nervous. I'm real relaxed Never? and chilled. Nah, nah. Uh, nerves, good nerves and bad nerves. Good nerves can be good for people and bad for people. But me, uh, you got to embrace, embrace the game. And I think we did. I think first half, it was real, real good. Against Coventry, I could have scored. Eli could have scored. Carlton could have scored. Clicker scored in the end. And then they changed the formation. And then they got back in the game. And then after that... It got nervy. Yeah. <laughs> it's never it, going to be easy. No, it's never really. going to be easy. It got nervy. I think if we had scored two goals in the first half, I think it would be a lot easier. But they changed formation. They put, I think they put Gordon back up front with Jokerez. And Hamer scored. I think he's a, he's, he's a good player. And then extra time comes. And the penalties <laughs> come. And then what a way. If we lose on penalties, it's it's real tough. But when you win on penalties, I think mm. it's not the best feeling. No, not, not the best way. But the feeling when, unfortunately... Uh, double missed missed his penalty and the f- I don't think you can explain the f- really? feeling just relief you know, you're running everywhere you don't know where to look left or right and you've got <laughs> the fans screaming and you've got people crying people on their knees you've got the supporters you've got members of staff and it's like I said the feeling you you cannot repeat it and it was a it was a great day for us in the end and you also had Tom Locke here, what happened to him. I mean, yeah. so much must have been in your mind. You know, it's tough. It's tough for when your skipper, obviously he was in the team of the season, so he was he, had a, he was in excellent form for him to go down after five, ten minutes. You have to regroup and he was on our minds and at half-time, you're thinking, 
we're one nil up, but sometimes your mind could be elsewhere. We've got to do this for Tom. Tom's been a rock at the back for us, and unfortunate for him to go down so early. But for us to to win in the end, then Carl and called him, and everyone tried to visit mm. him, hospital and that. But um, yeah, for him to to be a part of it for so little was unfortunate for him. But we won mm. in the end, and I think he was in the hospital bed watching us. So. <laughs> There's a photo of him there, so it was a it was a great feeling for him and for us, and yeah, we we did it for him in the end. Yeah. Is there, is there anyone you shared the moment with, like who knew your journey, who'd backed you, who meant a lot to you? The moment was all a blur. <laughs> when when the, the penny was missed, you're just running around and looking for someone to hug, and I think I hugged. Uh, Daz, who's a masseuse, has been with me since okay. since I signed, and just went down, had a little prayer. Thank God, um, said thank you for giving me health is for me health is wealth, and mm. give me the opportunity to to play the game and get through it. And the the joy that was on everyone's face, obviously Potsy joined the year after I I joined, and it's been nine nine ten years together, and we just hugged it out, and we really couldn't believe it and a lot of people's Premier League dreams came true I mean talking about dreams you're, you know, you're an Arsenal fan right Yeah, and you've got this run of fixtures coming up you've got Liverpool <sighs> and then you've got Man United yeah. and I think there's there's another game in Palace. Palace Yeah, and then you've got Arsenal Yeah, I mean it, it is, how do you see this mentally is this, is this dreamland stuff or are they just games they're games but they're big games I do you know all Premier League games are big but when you play the, the they say the top six ish teams you want to make a good counter so if you don't want to get beaten six seven nil and everyone's already writing you off i know there's already pundits that have <laughs> already said yeah you're not going to go down by christmas and january and you just want to make sure that even though you might not win the game make sure that we've played the loot and way and yeah given a good account of ourselves and played the way we play and make our contests and hopefully pundits and fans and people who have Everyone's got, everyone's got their own opinion, but the opinions black and Luton are a good team and deserve to be in the Premier League, which we all do, the, the fans do, the club do. There's always outside noise, but we can't control that. And Rob has made sure that we have make sure that in house we always believe in that we can achieve something. And every game he's tactically aware and positionally, and the players that are going to start at eleven and players that come on make sure that you give all that you can and make sure we play the looting way and hopefully we are we're doing that and come the end of the season whatever happens we've, we've played yeah. the way we can play have you had one moment or one player you've played against that you've thought mm, this is a bit this is Premier League this is that's like that's a bit special not yet not I yet. think in these coming yeah. games I think yeah. they're going to be yeah. 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 they're going to be in a, in a month's time and we might that would be different but yeah in these next coming games we've got yeah. a lot of big big teams that we need to play against and as I said you're playing against yeah. world class world class players so we've got to make a make a good account of yourself even if you're not playing and you're yeah. supporting the team you're not in the starting eleven, you're not in the squad but you're on the bench and you're making an impact in, in, in every way you can Is your mindset though as it has been every time you've climbed you know yeah you're saying you might be starstruck but I want to I want to compete. I want to show I deserve to be on this pitch. Yeah, hundred percent. We we got promoted and rightfully so. Even though team other team like Middlesbrough or South Sunderland will say we didn't deserve to, but as a, as a team, as a collective, as an individual, you think you you're gonna try to be the best player on the pitch, and you got to battle it out against your opposite number, whoever's in midfield or defense against against the strikers, and even vice versa. So every time you you're up against uh, a player from an opposing team, you gotta make sure that. You give a good account of yourselves and make sure that you try to get a better, better of them. Even if you don't play well, you track the runners or you do anything you can to. I don't know if you're putting the shell, you're putting the hair, whatever, <laughs> whatever little um, moments or things you can gain on them and try and make it as difficult as possible for the opposing players. My, my last question is just: um, I think your journey is probably quite inspirational to a lot of players. You know who at this moment in time might be playing non-league or might be a young player that's just been moving from a, a Premier League club looking for an opportunity somewhere and you're the guy that's taken all that and, and, and got to this point is is there like a kind of moral of your story is there a message that you'd say to a young player in that position 
the message I'll say is take that risk mm -hmm. because academy football even though it's nice you play for Chelsea you play for Arsenal Man United Liverpool when there's chances to play games don't be afraid to step down you may, you may step down two, three leagues you're getting game time and when people are looking at you has he played men's football can we trust him with playing with points on the line because academy football as I said is not points so playing games and don't be worried what other people say oh you shouldn't do this shouldn't do that if you think that you're good enough to drop down and make a career you might not be Premier League not everyone gets to play the Premier League because it's a real fortunate league so you just feel bad in your trade in the Championship Championship is, is another great league so I would say take the risk and don't be afraid to, to drop down and, and play games and hopefully you get bought by another Premier League team and <coughs> you go back to your parent club and <coughs> when you face them and score be like listen mm. I've I've took the risk you might have believed in me but it was time to leave and, and play more games mm. so that would be my my advice to to any young player that is afraid I'm saying don't yeah. be afraid because if you're afraid and you you won't know what's on the other side and the other side might be good but you wouldn't have explored it if you if you didn't if you didn't go and, and take a chance to to play more games lovely stuff thanks very much that's yeah. brilliant no problem thank you mm -hmm. I'm sure Pelly that you've brought in a lot of Luton Town listeners <laughs> to the game podcast for the first time so if you are a Luton fan and you enjoyed this show make sure you subscribe we are on Mondays and Thursdays with Johnny, Gregor and the rest of the Times team but for now chaps thanks for joining me and most of all Pelly thank you very much for telling us about your life in football cheers man thanks for having me <laughs> <laughs>